If I ask you to imagine the future of AI, what do you think about? The latest version of ChatGPT or Claude, maybe even some kind of autonomous agent that books your holidays or does your shopping for you. All of these things may be true, but there's another kind of AI that many researchers are imagining will actually shape the future of our digital interactions. And that is embodied AI. You know, I'm in Tokyo today, and one of the things that always amazes me about coming to Japan is just how alive everything is. And I don't just mean nature, I mean all of the technology, whether it's uh, a taxi you step into or an ATM you use or some kind of friendly rice cooker. There's this sense that everything is infused with not only some kind of personality, but in truth, a kind of a spirit. And for those of you that are familiar with Japanese culture, this comes as no surprise. The principles of Shintoism or animism shape the design and the development of everything in the physical world. There's a truth in this that I think informs the future of where AI is going as well. The idea that AI is not just going to be a chatbot, but something that's embedded in the fabric of everyday life. Okay, so here's the first thing. You've probably noticed that robots have been getting a lot smarter lately. And it's not just because we've found some magical new way of building them. It's actually the rise of large language models or large visual models. And this has really allowed us as human beings to communicate with these robots our intentions much more clearly. So when we're telling these robots to do something, whether it's wash some dishes or um, pick and pack a box inside an e-commerce facility, it's easier for these uh, robots now to parse our human intentions using the vast corpus of knowledge of human interactions and communication they've been trained on. The second piece is this. There is a growing number of people who believe that the secret to getting to the next level of AI is not going to just be more data or computational resources. It's potentially giving AIs a body of their own. I know it's a little wild, but think about kids. In particular, think about babies. Babies explore the world with all their senses, sight, sound, hearing, touch. I mean, you often will see a baby just staring up at its hand, looking at it moving for hours. Why? Well, in a sense, a baby is a kind of a multimodal AI. It's not only just collecting data from all of its senses. The brain of a child is actually building up a model of the way the world works. This really links to the work of the neuroscientist Carl Fritzen who actually believes in this concept of active inference. For him, the brain is a kind of a Bayesian prediction machine. It's building up a kind of a probabilistic model of the way the world works and is trying to reduce the prediction error between the outside world and the internal world of its own predictions of how it thinks that the world is actually functioning. Now, there's a group of researchers in France at the aptly named Noah's Ark Lab, run by Huawei. And they recently released a paper where they argued that the future of AI is embodied intelligence. I mean, imagine for instance that we are not here in Shibuya. We're actually, in fact, inside a beautiful Japanese forest. Okay, that's better. If you look closely, it's, you'll see Little insects running everywhere, incredible complexity. But the funny thing is, when you look at these multi-legged creatures, there's no, in a sense, central computer with a complex model driving all of the action and the mechanisms. There's kind of a difference between software and hardware. In nature's way, over millions of years of evolution, you've basically got the hardware of the body which affords the behavior of the limbs. So this is what they call morphological computation. Uh, the design of the legs, the way they're shaped, the way they interact with the environment, actually to some extent determine the way that they move. And you might have seen some incredible artistic sculptures of uh, almost like these shaped organisms which fall elegantly. They don't have any computer, there's no technology inside. The simple shape of the limbs and the body allow it to appear like it's moving. So if you think about this in terms of what we're just talking about, in terms of embodied intelligence, there is one way of looking at it, and that we are going to be able to create these synthetic organisms which are computationally much more simple, more elegant, which require less data, less computation, simply by the way that they're made. And in the bigger sense, 
we're going to see these kind of robots potentially everywhere. They'll be in all kinds of forms, like drones that can fly, insects that can move, larger type objects, things that resemble even cars. But the combination of all of these collecting data in a kind of a massive ecosystem will allow us to create in the future models that are much more complex and grounded in the real world. Finally, here's the third thing you need to know. What if in the future, everything was a kind of robot? If you look at a company like Tesla today, I'd argue that they are already not just building cars, they're building smartphones on wheels. The difference between an expensive Tesla or a cheap one aren't its leather seats or the quality of its paintwork, it's the features that are locked or unlocked via subscription. In other words, like the App Store. But in the future, a Tesla is going to be more than just an iPhone. It's actually going to be a kind of a robot. And already today, as companies that are owned by Elon Musk, like XAI, are releasing their new forms of AI, such as Grok, you can actually see the training data that's being used to train these large language models isn't just coming from textual information. It's actually coming from the videos and photos captured by self-driving cars themselves. So in the very near future, the secret to the next big giants of AI won't just be on the number of NVIDIA chips or clusters they're running. It may be their ability to actually deploy various forms of robots out in the real world in a kind of a data flywheel that will allow them to, with time, not only refine and create better models, but to actually train them to better understand the world around them. So right up front, I asked you to imagine what the future of AI could be. I think you can see it's something potentially much bigger than just generative AI. Chatbots are exciting, but they're really only just the beginning of a much bigger, more interesting world in which AI is not only embedded in every aspect of our digital lives, but in a very real sense, is embodied in our physical one as well.